Hi everybody, this is Stacy Roy. I'm with Briar.co and as you guys know by now, all the links you need are down below. They will take you where you need to go. Uh, today I'm going to pay special tribute to Queen Elizabeth II uh, and her love and her contribution to the horse industry. So as a very young child, uh, Queen Elizabeth was uh, horseback riding when she was age three. Uh, and fortunately, her grandfather, King George V, bought her a birthday pony on her fourth birthday. And that pony was a Shetland pony, and the name was Peggy. So she could be seen riding Peggy uh, around the grounds of the castle as a young child. And then when she debuted as a princess, she actually rode a horse named Tommy. And she presented herself at the annual Trooping the Colors ceremony. And so in 1969, she was gifted a black mare named Burmese by the RCMP, which is the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And every year from 1969 until 1986, she rode side saddle in this ceremony every single year. So she loved her black mare, uh, Burmese, who was a cross between a thoroughbred and a Hanoverian. Then, I don't know if you know, but she was a real advocate for the British um, native pony breeds. So she actually began a program, a breeding program, where she started to breed fell ponies, Shetland ponies, and Highland ponies in a effort to preserve the bloodlines of these native British horse breeds, pony breeds. So um, she had many fell ponies and highland ponies and shetland ponies and after her father king george the sixth passed away she actually got to inherit the breeding uh the breeding and racehorsing stock of her father so she became uh interested in thoroughbred horses and, and racing and she has owned and still does own many racehorses and thoroughbreds uh to this day actually her daughter, Princess Anne, was uh, one of the first royals to ever compete in the Olympics. And she competed on the Queen's horse, Goodwill, in 1976. She didn't win any medals, but she competed in eventing on that horse. Um, the Queen was known to, when she came to America, she was known to love the state of Kentucky, of course, because that's like thoroughbred country, right? So she loved going to Kentucky, to the Bluegrass State, and visiting with the fellow thoroughbred racehorse horses and owners, and just, you know, she could be seen talking to these people, going to the races, and really having a good time in Kentucky, in the Americas. Um, her late husband, Philip, as well as her grandsons, you know, Prince Charles and Prince Harry, they all uh, love to ride in polo, so they love to compete in polo. And actually, uh, her late husband, Prince uh, King Philip, actually uh, competed in driving horses all the time and driving events. And that's what uh, Briarfest 2023 is going to be about. It's going to be all about uh, driving horses. So that ought to be a really interesting event to, to attend for next year. So every year there is an event called the Royal Windsor Horse Show. Now the queen went to this event every single year of her life and it is the biggest horse show in the world. She would also show her horses there and her own ponies. But in 2019, she was actually fortunate enough to get to meet the famous dressage horse, Vallegro, uh, which Briar has actually created a model of. So Vallegro is quite famous and, and immortalized now with his own Briar horse model. Um, due to the long life contribution of Queen Elizabeth II to the horse industry, the FEI uh, Lifetime Achievement Award was presented to her in 2014. Now this reward, this award, I should say, um, was a brooch. It was a white gold brooch and it was done with diamonds, all diamonds, and they were actually nine intertwining horseshoes 
and it kind of looks like a flower or a floral type brooch. But if you look really closely, you'll see the, the individualized horseshoes that actually make up this brooch. So one thing you might not know about Queen Elizabeth II is she is known for actually saving the Cleveland Bay breed from extinction. Now, you might ask, well, how is that possible? Well, in the 60s, she actually bought a purebred Cleveland Bay colt, whose name was Mulgrave Supreme. This horse, this colt, was going to be exported from the country. And by her actually purchasing that colt, and she started a breeding program for him, she actually uh, saved the breed from extinction. Because if he had been exported, that breed would have become extinct. And that was um, one of Britain's uh, oldest indigenous horse breeds known to the, to, to, till today. So she uh, is credited with saving the Cleveland Bay. The Cleveland Bays are a fairly large breed, almost like a, a light draft type horse. And they were used to pull all the royal carriages. So very, very uh, interesting story there, you know, that she actually saved the Cleveland Bay from extinction by her, her active um, involvement in purchasing that one cult that was due to be exported from the country. So good for her. Her favorite pony to ride, and I actually have one here, so I'm going to show you the model, is named uh, Isabel Pony, and this fell pony is Carrollton Lima Emma. That's the name of her pony, and she actually rode this pony all the way up to the age of 96. And I'm going to show you the, the model that Briar made of this pony. So here we go. This is Carrollton Lima Emma. This is the fell pony that you'll see that you've seen the pictures of the queen riding around Windsor and uh, different places. She just loved this pony. It's a beautiful horse, beautiful pony. Reminds me of a Frisian with the feathering on the feet and everything, but what an amazing, amazing tribute to the queen and her, her horse. So that's Carlton Lima Emma, the fell, famous fell pony that Briar has immortalized now with their own model. So that's great. Now, what's really interesting is Queen Elizabeth II's legacy is still living on and her love of horses is still going strong. Even though she passed away just a few days ago on September 8th of 2022. But leave it to her thoroughbred horses to uh, do something special for her. Wes Newton, one of her thoroughbreds, actually won a race two days after her death um, at Pimlico. So it was his fourth win out of 19 starts. And that was kind of a neat little, maybe a farewell, you know, to his owner. But anyway, that's some of the horses, some of the things that she's done with horses, some of the horses that she's owned. She's had a huge impact on horses and many, many horse breeds. And she was always seen riding, uh, taking people out for rides, for hacks, they call them, around the grounds, around the castle grounds. Um, she, she just loved her horses and her horses loved her. And she just had such an impact on the horse industry. And we'll never forget that. And hopefully that right now in heaven, she is in her glory still riding horses and, and doing things with horses and um, having a smile on her face because every time she was around horses, she always had that huge smile on her face. You know, she was just, you could tell she was just beaming with the love that she felt for these amazing and magnificent animals, these creatures that we're so blessed to have in this world. So Thank goodness for somebody like Queen Elizabeth II and all her contributions that she was able to make while she lived. I mean, isn't that amazing that even at age 96, she was still riding her horses uh, all the time. Uh, that's just incredible to me. I think that's just a wonderful thing. And I wanted to share it with you guys today. So everybody, take care. Like us. Share us with your friends. Please subscribe. Help us get to the 1,000 subscribers. We're working on that really hard. Uh, and hopefully we can bring you some more excellent content uh, as we as we grow here together. So it's 
thank you so much for being with us and um and paying tribute to the queen elizabeth too and her beautiful beautiful horses and her life all right guys we'll talk to you all later take care